Hi. I hope everyone here is having a good evening. Um, I'm Cindy Harrison, your co-host of Creative Innovations and also doing our paint along, our first paint along ever tonight. So I hope that you are have your canvases ready and the items that you need ready to go for tonight's class. So I'm gonna put, hi everyone. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is have our four by four canvases ready to be painted. Have a piece of palette paper out. I think I'll wait a few minutes for some people to join us. And let me know if you are here yet. Oh, hi. Okay. So I see. Oops. Um, Mona, thank you for coming. Hi, Kathy. How are you doing? Hi, Maria. So I'm going to wait for a few more people to join us. But tonight, what I'm going to show you how to do is a faux jelly print. And um, I do have a jelly plate. So I will show how to do that as well. Hi, Stormy. So I'll show how to do that as well. Um, if you're going to paint along with us tonight, have a surface. It doesn't matter what your surface is. I happen to be using a four by four, one and a half inch deep canvas. Hi, Andrea. So I have my supplies, my ribbons, my lace. I have some bubble wrap. Uh, this is actually some of this product here, which is a uh, a metallic luster, but the people who ordered a kit from me, they're going to get one of these little things. I have my flowers, my key, my metal corners, all of that in this little goodie bag. Put that aside. And a stencil. Those that ordered the kit got a stencil, but you can use whatever stencil you have. And I put a list of, hi Cheryl, I put a list of paints in the event um, part, you know, it talks about this being an event and I have a list of paints. We're not gonna use them all, but these are the ones, the colors I chose that match the flowers that were in the kit. So you can choose whatever colors. Hi, Bobby. I have also, I have a brayer. It's not necessary. I'm gonna show you how you can do it without one, but if you have one, sometimes that works well. It definitely works well on the jelly plate and a dry brush. I think that co about covers it, everything that we need right there. And so I'm going to first show you how to do it with a jelly plate and then I will show you how to do it without a jelly plate. So you don't need it, but if you have one, why not? I froze, am I still frozen? Hey, Janet. I hope I don't keep freezing. Sorry, am I still frozen? How's that? Okay, hi, thank you everyone for coming. Uh, let's see, do you have a pattern for this? Um, oh, the pig, do I have a pattern for the pig? <laughs> it's actually a deco art social media um, project. So you can order that on the deco art social media or social, sorry, social media, social artworking page. They have a special area for social artworking and you go there and it's called Poppy the Pig. 
Okay. So let's see, am I still frozen? I hope not. Um, didn't freeze for Kathy. Thank you for letting me know or Donna. That's great. Cheryl. Okay, great. So, oh, okay. So it was Stormy's computer and not mine. <laughs> Yay. I hate that when it's my computer. Okay. So I'm going to probably try to look at the uh, comments from time to time, but I'm not good at this part of it. Um, so we'll see how this goes, but in the meantime, I've got my four by four canvas and I'm going to switch my camera around. So you see that I've got my jelly printing plate here. It's, I'm gonna take off one part of the plast of the acetate here and just expose one section of it. And I'm going to then pick a few colors um, let's see, I always like to have a little bit of the light buttermilk. I'm going to put a drop and it's like really, it's a drop here and there. If you don't have a jelly plate, don't worry. I'm going to show you how to do this without a jelly plate. And I'm going to put some green lagoon. Oops, that's a little too much. Darker colors take over so fast. Let's put a little sea glass. Okay, sometimes I got to shake this up. Okay, so I have a little bit of that here and there. So that's three colors. If we went with one more, I'm kind of trying to refrain from going too dark, but maybe I should. Let's go into the dark, What? whatever. And this is going to be oh, not shaking up enough. You know how that goes, right? I'm really going to be just a one drop kind of girl on that one. So on the jelly plate, I'm going to use my brayer and I'm going to roll down and roll across. So now we have this, this design here and you could always take the brayer and go right on your surface which I'll do on the edges here. Can you see that? Whatever you've got left over on your roller. And then I'm going to take my jelly plate. That's why I leave the acetate on it. If any of you don't know me by now, I hate getting my hands wet or dirty. So I always make find a way to do it without dirtying my hand. I'm going to put this on here, press down, lift off, turn it around and I'm getting dirty. Press down, lift off. And I'm going to keep doing that until all the paint is off of my jelly plate and onto my surface. And it does slide around, so try not to slide it around too much. And it works on the sides too. So that's how you get all these different colors ah, on here. So I'm going to let that one dry, put that aside. And this is the fun part, because again, like my friends know, I don't like getting paint on myself, but then I go and do this and they're like, see, you can do it, Cindy, you can get dirty and it's okay. You're washable, right? <laughs> Hi, Liz. So. The next thing to do it, if you don't have a jelly plate and you don't need one, is to take your palette paper here. And now we're gonna do the same thing. Maybe I'll use a little darker color. 
So put some, this is the Mississippi mud. I'm gonna add, I still like the, the blue green. So the green lagoon and the sea glass. I'll make this one a little darker and not put the, okay. So I'm gonna take my brayer again and go back and forth, put that down. And now, now I'm gonna pick this up off of my surface here and take my canvas, flip this over and place this on my canvas. Flatten that out. Give it a little rub. And then peel away. If it doesn't get all over, just keep doing it by moving the canvas around or the paper around your canvas so that you get areas that still have paint on it that didn't come off. So you can also put it on its side Love that. So obviously I'm running out of paint so I can go back with my brayer because there's still paint on that and roll some more paint on. Like you see the dark, what is it? Mississippi mud is taking over, but it's gonna be on the sides now. So it doesn't really matter. So it's coming off. And like I said, the other way would be just to take your brayer and roll over it already. I don't mind that the, um, that the canvas background is showing through. Oops, it's like, am I still here? So I have no problems with that coming through. There you go. And um, sorry, Kathy, about the freezing. Hi, Pat. So I don't mind that sometimes the canvas shows through in some areas, kind of gives it a, an urban jungle kind of look here with a little bit of the color. contemporary look. So that's how that works. And what I want to do, just quickly get some of this paint off of my brayer. I don't want that to dry on there. Wash that off. So if you're painting along with me, go ahead and do that. If you don't have a brayer, oh, I was going to show you how to do it without a brayer. So let me do that. That way is taking a few drops and I'll do this for the side. Oops, too much. Let's spread that out a little bit. And what were we gonna do, Mississippi? Let's be a little more sparing on the Mississippi because there's a lot on there already. This is a fun part. Remember when we were kids? And hit play again. Oh, um, 
take our fingers and rub the colors together back and forth. So we have all the colors there. Then you take your surface and you can either press it into that or you can um, lift off the paper like I did before. And let's see, do it on this side. Just touch up areas you don't want uh, that you didn't cover with the paint, with the press. Press. And then tap that color. So it's finger painting, but it gives the illusion of a jelly print. Squish that around and do the last side. Press that down, lift off. Now, obviously this is putting more paint on your surface so it's going to take longer to dry. But that gives you a nice modeled look as well. If you don't want that much paint on your surface, you can take your paper towel and just gently tap down and take off excess paint. on the sides and the top. And this will help it to dry faster. And there you go. Okay. Now I'm gonna have to hit that with a blow dryer. So you have three ways of doing this. So go ahead and do yours. And since I can't see you, I don't know where you're at. If you're painting along with me, please let me know in the comments section that you're painting along with me. And if you are, let me know when you're ready for the next step when you're dry. Yes, that does, Donna. That does. So let me know when you're done. And then I can move on to the next step. Because this is a paint along our first one on creative innovations. And I want you all to be able to follow me, paint along with me. And this is the only way I'm gonna know if you are and if you're ready for the next step. Hi, Mary. I hope everyone's doing well tonight. You know what, if you could, could you please put in the comments where you're from, like the state where you're from, or if you're from a different country, different continent, not painting, just watching. And that's fine, that's fine. But those who have bought the kit, thank you for buying the kit. And if you are painting along with me, I don't want to move along. Stormy's trying to paint along. Thank you, Stormy. Florida, California, Massachusetts. Kathy just watching, that's fine. New York, M-O, Montana? No, M-O, Missouri. I get the M's mixed up, Liz. Georgia, California. Watertown, New York, yeah, Ohio, Dallas, Texas, it must be hot down there, Kansas. Oh, but you're in California, Cheryl, there you go. I am full of paint. Florida, I love Florida. Wisconsin, love it there too. Hi, Donna, Amanda, Kansas, oh, wonderful. Kentucky, love it. Canada, yes, British Columbia. Bogota, Colombia, wow, sweet. Welcome. 
I looked down and saw my name thinking I didn't write hi. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Small world, right? I mean, yeah, you see someone with the same name you had. Louisiana, Alabama. Thank you so much, ladies, for joining me tonight. So these so far are, if you see this one, the two faux jelly prints, or one is a real jelly print because I used the jelly plate. The other one is a faux jelly print. And you can do it either way. I showed three ways, two with the brayer and one with your fingers. So you can do finger painting and get a similar result. So while that's drying, are you still talking, Cindy? Now my sound is gone. Yes, I'm still talking. Can you hear me, Liz? Can you hear me, Liz? There we go. Um, yes, Liz. OK. <laughs> So let me just hit this with the blow dryer. I hate running the blow dryer while I'm trying to talk to you, but. Sometimes that's what we just gotta do to get it done. Gotta get her done. Nevada, nice. Aha, uh -huh. hi Jeannie, Teresa. So the thing with the jelly print and the faux jelly print, it puts a lot of paint on your surface. And it takes a while for it to dry. So yes, Stormy, it, Facebook will record it and it will stay on there forever. I don't know if anyone heard me, can you type that to her? Okay. this over there for now. Now this here, if you're painting along with me, let me know when you're ready to move on. I'm just gonna wash this off so I can still use my palette. Okay. This will oops, be recorded and uh, available on Facebook in this group only. Okay. The next step I want to do is to take my stencil. So everybody who's painting along with me, take out your stencil and your dry brush. Thank you, Connie. So take out your stencil and your dry brush and place it over top of your surface. And I'm going to go with a lighter color. So for this one, I didn't use any light buttermilk. So I'm going to go with the light buttermilk for this one. I'm going to take my, my dry brush. This is a Sharf Dome Round um, number eight. 
and I'm going to work it into my brush and then wipe the excess off on my paper towel. Hi, Luann. Hmm, that's interesting. So Facebook, gotta love it. So now I'm gonna go and try to scrub some of this color into my stencil. If I put too much, then it comes really thick. And being that this is a very delicate stencil, I'm not having a lot of success with this dry brush. So what I'm going to do is go and pick up my deer foot. And this is yet another way when one way doesn't work, work with what you got. Find another way. So I'm going to pounce this one down. You can also use this cosmetic sponge. And if you have a real stencil brush, you can use a real stencil brush and put that on there. But this is a delicate stencil. The other one I used didn't wasn't as um, delicate as this one. So I'm just gonna keep pouncing until I use up all my paint. I'm not being particular as to how I get um, every single nook and cranny. It's kind of a hit or miss. So if you see it's light and it's dark, there's some areas that are bolder than others and it's okay. I don't want it to be calling your attention. It's kind of in the noise that makes sense to you. Where we want it in the background. We don't want it honking out at us saying, hello, I'm a stencil, look at me. Okay. You don't have to have Zoom downloaded for this, girls. This is just Facebook. <laughs> this is just Facebook. Now, if you wanted to join me in the Zoom room, you could. And I could give you, you know, I could uh, make that av available to you. But this is, I'm in the Zoom room by myself. And it's really just the way that Facebook is right now, or that Zoom is interacting with Facebook, why this keeps freezing. Well, that's good to know, Bobby. Thank you. It, streaming, live streaming is a funny animal. It, you just don't know what it's going to do, if it's going to work, if it's not going to work. where it's gonna work, when it's gonna work. But we're trying it, so hopefully with time, we will get better. I mean, Zoom will get better or something will change and things will improve. You can always hope for improvement. Always room for improvement. Okay, so big reveal. I hope I got it all and I did. So again, it's a hit or miss. It's not, um, hi Helen, it's not, it has to be perfect. It does not have to be perfect. Now this was with the light buttermilk. Now that this one's dry, I'm going to go with this one and pick up a, the Mississippi mud and make it a little darker. And let's see how that turns out. So put that on here, get all the water out of my brush. And we might not like this, but it's one of those things you got to play with it and see what you like. And I'm not being perfect and hitting every single open space shown. It's a hit or miss, 
just pounce some color on there and get out of town. It's kind of what I said, get out of town, just get out of town, put it on and get out. This is background. That's what we're all about this month in Creative Innovations is backgrounds, right? You, I hope you, you're watching a lot of the videos that people have been posting and their um, pieces that they've been posting about how to create interesting backgrounds. And this is one of those interesting backgrounds that it's a lot of layers, but when all said and done, you're not really looking at the background as much as you're going to be looking at what we're putting on top of it. But without it being there, you would think like it's boring or dull or whatever. So you need some interest, but not so much it takes away from the center of interest, the, the item that you really want people to look at and enjoy. if that makes any sense to you. So I'm just gonna keep pouncing a little bit at a time. I don't want it to be overpowering. I just want, and yes, I can go over the edges if, if you want to, but there you go. So you have one with a light background and one with a darker background. Okay. So. To wash my um, stencil off, people are using hand sanitizer and things like that. So I will go do that later. Now I want to take a look at the flower choices I have because that will determine my next background color. This one here has this blue as a, a blue green. That might go nicely with the dark background. I'm thinking I like that better than with the light. I'm thinking this is too dark for these flowers, so it needs a lighter background. See how I determine that? Where do you get the jelly pad? Um, I think. <laughs> hate to see it. like I think I got mine from like artist club but I'm sure there's like oh you want to see the canvas better or do you want to see the jelly pad at let me see if I can do this I'll try, Pat. Hold on. Did that help at all? Um, so look at like a Dick Blix or, I mean, you can just Google jelly pad and uh, Jerry's Autorama online. I got mine online, put it that way. So this is Jelly Arts Jelly Printing Plate. This is a four inch round plate. And I probably got it from jerryzartorama.com. Okay. So now these ones are a little lighter. So I think that goes better on the darker canvas. So see how that works? So that's, that's how I'm doing this. I don't want to stay zoomed in because then I'll go off camera easier. Oops, back up, back up, back up. Okay. So now that we have that and I know which flowers are going on which, now I'm going to take, this doesn't have any pink in it. 
So I'm not even going to bother to go into the pink. There's no pink in here. But what I will do is pick up some of the darker teal because this is a light background. And I'm going to take my bubble wrap, put this aside, put these aside, take my bubble wrap with a little bit of the Green Lagoon. And if you have a three quarter inch wash brush, big brush, take this color and let's paint over some of our bubbles here and flip it over, press down, lift off. Well, seeing how that's not really showing up much, I am going to just take my dirty brush into the light buttermilk and put the light buttermilk on here and see if those show up any better. Yep, we get some bubbles there. So let's do a little bit more of that. So I'm not going to put it all over the place. I kind of kitty cornered it. So balanced it that way. Can you see? Can everybody see? Okay. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Nails are getting full of paint. Thank you. <laughs> so now that we have that on this one, on this one, because there is some pink in there, what I might do for that one is take some of the spice pink because I felt that that was the closest color to that. And there's also some pink in here. And shake that bottle up. And with a little bit of that spice pink, put these aside. We can put that on here and make some spice pink bubbles. And you can, again, carry this stuff over to the sides if you want. And the other thing I'm going to do is just have a little bit of the, well, let's go with, I was going to put some light buttermilk in the pink together to make a lighter pink, or we can go with the sea glass because this is such a dark background. So we can actually mix a little bit of that in with here. Put that on top, wipe that off. And then I'm going to use a little bit of the sea glass in the other corners. There you go. And you can keep reusing your um, bubble wrap, so don't throw it away. How are we doing? Is everyone having trouble following me or um, 
most of you got it okay. I'm not freezing too much. I hope. Okay. So if you're still here, give me a thumbs up. So I, you know, on the screen, there's a thumbs up. I'm doing fine. Great, Bobby. That's, I thank you very much. I really do appreciate that because it's like, I'm just talking to myself and oh my God, is anyone watching? Okay. So we got a little bit of pink here and we didn't on that one. And that's because we didn't have any pink in our flowers on this one. So I'm going to have to blow dry these again because of how thick that paint is. Oh, sorry, Stormy. Maybe it's an operator on this end. <laughs> Let's hope not. Um, so thanks, Cheryl. I'm going to, thanks, Connie. I'm going to, um, and Christy, do this. It'd be interesting to find out if when we do the watch parties, do the, do the videos freeze up for people as well? Or is this just the live streaming that's going to start freezing up for people? Watching from Missouri. Thank you, Diana. Okay, I think this one's dry faster, so I'm going to stick with that one. Now, this little cup of um, metallic luster that I gave everybody who ordered a kit, it comes in different finishes, obviously. I've got gold and rose gold and copper and things like that. This is the silver one. So what I did was I just scooped out a little bit for people and put it in this cup. Now I use this to change, sometimes I use this to change metals if my key wasn't silver and I wanted it to be silver, I could put rub this silver on the key or the corners. These happen to already be silver. So could I rub more silver on it? Of course. And again, I get dirty with my hand and then my finger and then I can rub and make it a little bit shinier than it was. So take some of that out. And even though this is a little on the dry side, if you open up the jar, if you get a brand new jar and you open it up right away, it's just a creamy, more of a creamy effect. But open that up and make that a little shinier. And I can do the same on here but I mean, this is pretty shiny. But what I wanna do is try to bring a little bit of that shine to my surface. So on my finger, I pick up some more of this and then gently rub some areas. If it doesn't come off right away, move it to hit the uh, lighting. Oh, I see Maria, thank you for that. Arizona, that's nice. Um, hi, Judy. So yeah, bad weather is not our friend, right? So the silver is not showing up too, too much on this one. I bet you it'll show up on the other one better because the other one's got a darker um, background. So put a little bit of this. Yeah, see, that shows up better. And this will tie in and balance the metallic pieces that we're using. I'm trying to stay away from some of the wet spots here. Okay. So 
So now we've got a little bit of metallic. You've got your stencils, your jelly faux print, your bubble, bubble print on your pieces. We're just cooking now, right? Thank you, Vera. So now I'm going to decide how I want to put our things together. I know that I typically put the metal corners on the opposite on one side. So you can decide if you want on this one, I would have to decide whether I want the pink up or down. Cool. See, we learned something new today, Linda. <laughs> um, you can decide whether you want the pink up and down, uh, or sorry, up or down on this side. See the, I can do that. And that would determine when you put your key on and your flowers, where are your flowers sitting? So if you do, probably I'm gonna go like that. And then the pink can be up in the middle and down. Make sense? Those were for that one, right? Yes, I think so. And these are gonna go over here on this one. Always decisions, you have to decide is the key gonna go on this side or the other side? And this is lighter, so let's go put that here. Put the darker one up in here and have that in the middle. Or you can have two up and one big one down. Looks like Mickey Mouse. I'm gonna go down in a row like that. Okay. And so, so Stormy, the difference between what I'm doing today and what we did on Saturday with Debbie's class is Debbie, you came into Zoom and when you're in Zoom, you're fine. Now I'm taking Zoom and I'm going through Zoom to Facebook. And that is the difference. Now I'm in Facebook versus in Zoom. So I'm hoping that that makes sense. And it's, it's the Facebook that's the problem. It's not Zoom and it's probably not your computer. It's just Facebook. So now that we know which way we're going with this, put these on here and make sure I'm happy with this placement. because I'm thinking this is awfully white down here and do I want it that white or not? So I might want to turn it around. And balance it that way. Here's another thing we can do because I'm feeling this is very light all around. I'm gonna go ahead and take my three quarter inch wash brush. And on the corner of it, pick up this green lagoon, kind of like a side load. And I'm going to deepen the edges. You can deepen the edges on the, on the edge part too, if you want. That kind of is bringing all the um, interest more into the center now, so it's not on the outside edge. 
Hey, Nancy, thank you for joining. So, how are we doing so far? Is everyone with me? I hope everyone's with me. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm gonna have to um, dry that. I know, don't we just love Facebook? And I think if you're going to do the outside edges here, I would think you'd want to do the outside edges, at least down the corners of that one as well. I'm going to get my glue and we're going to use two types of glue. One type of glue is going to be a quick drying tacky glue. And another type of glue I'm going to use is E6000. And the first one being the tacky glue, because I want to typically, if you want, you can varnish this, but I'm not going to handle it a lot. So I don't feel the need to have to varnish, but I'm going to find a nice placement for my lace and my ribbon. See how close I want them. And then I know, try whatever will work, right? I'm going to, if you want to draw a line, you can draw a line. Otherwise, I'm just going to put the glue down in a, as much of a straight line as I possibly can. Open up the airways here. Sometimes the glue dries inside. So you have to get it out. There it is. But you can kind of put a straight line as best you can. And we're going to put this one down first. Obviously, you want a glue that dries clear. Okay. Make sure I'm, I cut six inches. So it goes over end to end. Lay that down. Next, we're going to do the other side. The other ribbon. And I'm going to put it fairly close. And you don't need a lot. Okay. And again, Try to, you've got six inches, start at one end. Place it down. Okay. 
If it's a little over here, it's okay. We can trim that off after. Now we get to put on our metal pieces. And for that, I'm gonna use the E6000. Hi, Lana. <laughs> Maria is awesome. And I'm going to take my metal pieces and with a little dollop of glue, put those on in the corner. And then find the flat part of your key, what part of the key will be touching, oops, your surface. And you put that down. So I've got, mostly it's right under here and the edge of this, maybe one side of that. So that being said, I'm gonna stick some here Stick some on the end of the key here and on a few places going down the body of the key, especially where it's stick that on there like that. And then let that dry for a second. Now we have our flowers to place on. And with that, I'm going to go back to the white crafter's glue. And I believe I said I was going to go up and then down, let me just check again and make sure that I'm happy with that composition. Yep, I think I am. So know where you're going to place this. Uh, and then put that down, have it overlapping the key a little bit. Yeah, there's no rhyme or reason to, to how Facebook works. Put that aside there because I want to make sure that some of that shows up. And I'm going to put a good dollop on that and just rest it on top. So there you have it. If you want more texture, by all means, go ahead and add more texture. There's so many different tools that you can use to add texture to your background. But this gives you some interest in your background, but doesn't totally detract from the flowers and the key and the metal just kind of marries, balances the whole thing with your metal luster on your background and your metal corners and the key. So everything is balancing the darks, the lights, and the metallics. Buffering now. What are we buffering, Connie? And that's funny, Maria, that that you feel that uh, Facebook works better on Firefox because I think Zoom works better on Chrome. And I'm not sure anything works well on Safari. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Christy. So our hour is up. Does anyone have any questions that aren't related to the issues with Facebook? I hope that if you do this project, please post it so that uh, we can see, see it. Thank you, Andrea. 
So please post it so we can all see it. And um, this will work with any combination of color. Wonder. And so just pick some flowers out that you find, pick colors that match the flowers. Oh, Safari does work. Excellent, Linda. Pick colors that match your flowers. Um, I actually think I got my stencils from Home Depot, but I have a bunch here. So if you, you know, if you'd like one, um, I can sell you one. I bought a whole bunch. Um, so yes, I have more kits for sale and they have the keys and the flowers and the corners in them. And they come with the ribbon and the lace, a canvas, a stencil, the bubble wrap and the metallic luster. I just don't include the, the paints, but you have the list of paints here and the creative innovations on the events page. Started back in the middle now. In the middle of what? <laughs> Sorry. So yeah, so I do have the stencils. If you don't want the kit, I can just sell you the stencil. That's fine too. Right off the top of my head, I think they're six dollars. Uh, the kit was twelve. So you do the math. Um, let's see if there's no other questions, do you do you also have? parts that work on round memory boxes. Okay, so obviously square, these corners are not gonna work on your round memory box. However, you know, you can measure the distance where you wanna put the ribbon, decide where you wanna put the ribbon and measure that. And that will tell you how long to cut the ribbon. And the, the rest of it is pretty generic for shape. The only thing that is keeping this stuck to being on a square are these corners. Otherwise than that, you can do this on any surface, any, any shape surface you have. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, Maria. So yeah, so you don't need it. You don't need to spend money on a jelly plate if you don't want. I like the results of a jelly plate, but if you don't have one and you don't want to spend that money or whatever, it's okay. You can't spend that money. It's okay because you can either use um, the brayer and on your palette paper, or you can use your fingers on your palette paper and you'll get similar results and they're still very nice results. So you don't have this money. And I have to thank Christy Hartman for that. She's the one that shared that trick, tips and tricks with me from uh, our days working uh, her, together over Purely Acrylics, my other program that I had done a few years back. So thank you, Christy, for the, for the tip. And I love it because I do have the jelly print. I just don't take it out very often. So awesome inch. And as I know, Christy Hartman also has uh, YouTube channel that has videos on it about jelly printing. So you want to go check that out too. I love you. So uh, Christy, put your link in for your YouTube channel. I have one too, but I never did one on jelly print because that's not my forte. But I like the fast and easy way of doing it without having to have a jelly print. So I do do that way a lot. So Christy can put her link down there and you can just look up Cindy Harrison art on mine. So if you want the kit, you can go to cindyharrisonart.com and under marketplace kits, it'll be there. Or if you want the stencils, I think this, it's under stencils in the marketplace under stencils. So until next time, we have a new theme coming up on creative innovations next month. It's going to be um, functional items. So functional painting. What does that mean? Stay tuned and we'll tell you. I'm going to, well, put a video out. Uh, Debbie and I will be putting a video out on all about it on the first of the month. 
and we will talk about what we're looking for for you to post and everybody will have some of these items in their house i am sure and we look forward to seeing them we love it when you post and we see what you're what you're up to because that makes everybody happy and inspires everyone to break out their paint brushes the other thing we're going to do is lana lamb's going to be doing a watch party the beginning of the month and the date and time will be on that post on the first of the month and i will do another one of these hopefully it'll work better for most people and it's going to be a tote bag we're going to paint on a tote bag so look forward to seeing that coming up and if you haven't already known about it and signed up for it um check out artfulwebinars.com and that's Lydia Steves will be doing a class on August 17th. She just has a few seats left, less than a handful of seats left. And she's doing a beautiful color pencil kitten with a pastel background. And Lana Lamb's class webinar for August, for September will be going on sale August 1st. So check that out as well. So until next time, remember to always paint with heart. Thank you everyone for stopping in tonight and take care. See you soon.